Hello, my name is Jimmy and the Integra is back. Not the Integra that you kind of know and love, like the DC-2R or the DC-5. Those were hot hatches or hot coupe hatches, depending on how you think about it. This is still a little hot, but not as hot as you might have remembered. It still has 200 horsepower, but it's a little 1.5 turbo. It's not a high revving four cylinder VTEC kind of blazing engine, but that's fine. In today's world, this is what's going to sell. And this Integra, I mean, I've been driving it for the past week, getting a lot of looks and a lot of questions about it. So I think it still has a chance. While certainly this is not some hot hatch, it's still a very, very good vehicle. So let's go over all of it and just, well, dive into it to see exactly what you get. The front end of the Integra, it's very distinctive Acra, isn't it? You got the chiseled front end, the Acra grille, the headlamps, they all scream Acra. And I love this little Integra that's stamped onto the front bumper. It's a bit of a homage to the older Integras. Moving on to the side here, I do have 18 inch wheels, which actually looks quite proportionate to the vehicle. I know a lot of vehicles these days are like 20, 22 inch wheels, but I think 18s is a good choice. This specific one that I have has some carbon fiber trim here on the mirrors, as well as a trunk lid. It aids to that kind of performance look. And I do like the black side skirt that we got on the bottom. The doors, pretty typical, unlike the older Integras where it's frameless, you have a full frame on these. Adds a little bit more to the structural rigidity, and that's totally fine. You do get little LEDs behind the door posts on the front and rear, so you can't open those with ease. But the proximity door locks are only on the front doors. Moving to the back here, just like Integras of the past, this is a hatchback, not a regular sedan. So you can't have a full lift back, carbon fiber lip spoiler, LED tail lamps, and, well, dual exhaust tips down on the bottom. Overall, I think, you know, it's a pretty good looking vehicle. It stands out, but you gotta admit, there's definitely some civic influence in here compared to the older Integras, which, well, actually shied a lot away from that. This still feels like a Civic. I don't think that's such a bad thing though. If we open up the hatch here, it's actually quite generous. At 24.2 cubic feet, it's more than big enough for everything that you really need. The only thing I would say is, the lift over height is quite tall. As you can see, I'm 5'11", it's just at my waist. So whatever you gotta lift in, you gotta lift it nice and high to get it inside the trunk here. Underneath the trunk, you don't get a spare tire, but you get a fix a flat kit and a bunch of foam here. It looks like there's enough room for a spare, but they decided to go against it for whatever reason. You can fold the seats down 60-40 to expand this rear cargo room if you like. But I gotta say, while this is a little bit longer than the Civic hatch, it's actually a little bit smaller. And that's mostly due to the subwoofer that we get on the side here. But let's check out those rear seats. All right, the back seats of the Integra. I'm 5'11", and if I sit upright, yep, I am out of headroom. Um, <laughs> if I slouch, it's fine. Then I'm just grazing the top here. Uh, legroom though, it's actually pretty good. The back of the front seats actually have a little scallop in them, so it's pretty comfortable. I do have heated seats and I have two USB charge points, but no ventilation or anything else. Not bad back here, but you do get scratchy plastics on the top, which is pretty normal for a vehicle like this. But armrest in the center, that's a little bit low. It's exactly the same that we find in the Civic. And just like the Civic, I just find this one to be a little low. I'm kind of slouched to the right a little bit. It's kind of weird. In terms of fitting child seats in here, well, it's very similar to the Civic. No surprise. Here's a click link on the driver's side, infant seat, as you can see, there's plenty of room for that. You're able to glide the infant carrier in and out of the cabin with ease. As for a convertible, here it is on the passenger side. Once again, no real issues. However, due to that sloping roof line, there isn't as much room as I may like putting my child in and out. As for in front, well, I'm okay. 5'11", once again, I have enough space in front of the child seat. The Integra does have two lower anchors and they're just behind these covers here. It's a little bit awkward in terms of its placement, but I think it's fine. The one thing I found is because the headrest that's back here, they are, well, stuck. They don't move. It's a little bit awkward for, well, child seats as well as maybe just for the rear occupants, depending on how you lean. But I think it's fine, you know, for a compact sedan like this, this is more than comfortable. But let's head up to the front. All right, the front seats. 
Well, the front seats are actually quite different than the rear. The rear are full leather, whereas the front, you get this blend of, well, I'm pretty sure it's not Alcantara, it's just suede with leather. So you get leather on the side, but Alcantara in the center. I'm sure that's not gonna wear well, you know, down the line, but hey, for now it looks great. And actually it grips you very, very nicely in the seat. The seats themselves are heated, but not cooled. Unfortunately, you don't have that option. On the driver's side here, I have four aft, up, down, like backrest back up and down, and I get a four-way adjustable lumbar support. That's nice. But the passenger side, you don't get any of that. Well, you get some powered options, forward and aft, and the backrest goes up and down, and that's it. You can't adjust the tilt, you can't adjust anything else on the passenger side. So if you are calling shotgun, I mean, depending on how tall you are, you might not be the most comfortable up there. In front of me, I do have an updated Acura steering wheel. This looks really, really good. I mean, it honestly, it looks exactly the same as a Civic other than the logo in the center. And you have an A-Spec logo on the bottom. It's heated with some nice red stitching on the inside and it just works. Nothing really wrong with that. Behind that, a full digital cluster. The cluster works well. While it is a little bit more of like a simple cluster, it shows you everything you really need and you're, well, there's tiny bits of adjustments in here. It's definitely nowhere near as cool as like the FL5, the new Civic Type R that just got released, but I think it's fine for everything that you need. You also have a heads up display and that actually looks really, really good on here. Infotainment, straight out of the Civic. I mean, it works though. The graphics is a little different in this than the Civic, which is normal. I mean, when you're putting in another vehicle, you'll put a little bit of extra work just to make it look a little different because it is from the Civic, you also have wireless CarPlay as well as Android Auto, and that's been working really well. There's a Qi wireless charger right down in the center. I'm able to put my phone in there, connects, just works. The climate vent, that actually is very high quality, just like the Civic. Same thing with the climate control. And I love the, the clicks. It just sounds great. It feels, well, very high quality. And the cabin, it just feels that way. Everything that you kind of touch up here, it's actually quite nice. There's nothing that stands out as being cheap or anything like that. But the same can be said with the Civic. The Civic is actually really good as well. One thing I did find is if you're using taller bottles like I am, if you're putting it in a center, it's kind of in the way of your shifter. But if you put it on the side, which this bottle doesn't really fit that well on, then it's okay. Oh, the ELS audio system, that works really well. Your speaker right above my head here, which looks super out of place, but they do sound good. Sounds quite a bit better than the Bose, I think, that you get in the regular Civic. So worthwhile upgrade. But let's head on the road and feel what this Integra is like, comparing it to like the Civic, the Mazda 3, and whatever else that you can get around this price range. All right, on the road with the Integra. Underneath the hood, one and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. All that is fed through this slick shifting six-speed manual to the front wheels with a limited slip, diff. And all of that translates to actually quite a bit of fun. No, it's not a Type R, it's not a Type S, it's not a Type anything, it's an A-Spec, which in Acro's term, it's dressed up to look real quick, but it really isn't. It's the base engine in this vehicle. It's the base Integra engine. And 200 horsepower for a base Integra engine is pretty good in my books. I mean, not that long ago, 200 horsepower was like your performance car. I mean, Mark V GTI, that was 200 horsepower. Even the Mark IV was like only 180 or so. Anyways, 200 horsepower for Integra, it's sufficient. It's not designed to be super fast. It's not that type of vehicle. It's efficient. And even like right now, complete standstill, engine is shut off until I depress the clutch where the engine will start up again. You do have a few drive modes to get normal, sport, as well as comfort. And along with, well, throttle changes and suspension changes, which is actually kind of cool. You also had an individual mode to customize it to however you like. You can also change the cluster with your individual mode. Honestly, it's good. The suspension changes is pretty minimal, to be honest. Like, from normal to sport, you're probably not going to really feel much of a difference, if any. However, you know, if you go from comfort to sport, and you're driving the exact same roads, 
and you're paying a lot of attention, yeah, you're gonna feel something. I mean, you have to. There are changes, but it's so subtle. It really is. It's definitely not nearly as firm as you may want in a sports car, but it's not a sports car. It's a sporty sedan, so I think it's fine. What you have to know is it actually just drives like a Civic. It really does. The latest generation Civic is so good already. It's so refined that this feels just slightly above that. I think it's a little quieter in here. However, without you know proper equipment and testing them back to back, it's super hard to say. I feel that it's a little bit quieter, but that could be just me and you know how I feel today. Honestly, though, comparing this to a regular Civic, it's not that big of a change. If you really want this in a Civic, here in Canada at least, the Civic Si gets you basically the same creature comforts as this. So why would you go for the Integra? Well, first, looks. The Civic, I gotta admit, for the 11th gen, it's quite a bit more bland. This, in my eyes, actually looks quite good. I know the prototype when they showed it in that yellow, let's be honest, the yellow was, was not doing it any favors. This, the white, it's actually pretty nice. I gotta admit, I don't have any problems with, you know, the way that it looks, the way that it's styled, the way that the interior feels. I was actually driving with a friend and we both said that this is quite European, the way that it's, you know, built and just how it makes you feel as a vehicle. You know, when you get into like a Mercedes CLA or a BMW 2 Series or uh, an Audi A3, for example, it feels like a premium product. It feels like the same in here. And that is definitely a good thing because Integra's of the past definitely didn't feel like that. The doors are heavier. It just feels more robust. It feels like you're buying something that's worth this money. At 42,000 Canadian dollars, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's also not the most expensive. It undercuts any luxury brand. Mercedes, Audi, BMW, it's all cheaper than all of those. Sure, you might be like, oh, but this is just a Civic dressed up. Well, a 2 Series Grand Coupe, that's a Mini dressed up. I mean, sure, a Mini is still technically better than a Civic, but it's still a Mini that's dressed up. And that's how automakers make their money these days. Honestly, this car, <laughs> when you put that pedal down, it's fun. All right, it's fun. For the speeds that you need to go on city streets and having just a good amount of power, this is all you need. You don't need any more than this. And it has like the radar guided cruise or adaptive cruise, I should really say. It has a good lane keep, which means on longer journeys and whatnot, you're able to still, you know, be relaxed. You can just let the car do its thing. You don't have to think as much. This is the complete package when you're looking at a good family sedan. If you really, really want more power, wait. There's been rumors and leaks and even spy shots of an Integra potentially Type S, and it has the same three exhaust tips that the Civic Type R has. So maybe it could have that 300 some odd horsepower that the uh, Civic Type R has, maybe. Or maybe it just has a two liter turbo with 280. Whatever the case may be, it looks like they're making a hot version of it. And if that's what you want, Acura is gonna deliver that in the near future. But for now, I think this Integra is still, it's still a good value when you're looking at a premium product. It just kind of sucks because the Civic has gotten so good, it needs to push the Integra further up that scale. If the Civic wasn't as good, if the Civic was, you know, eighth generation Civic, totally makes sense. But now it's just so close, it's just harder. And that is a black and red 3000 GT cars that you see on the road in any case <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video like the video if you do subscribe if you want to see more and i'll catch you next time take care